we're here with uh, Mr. Brian Castaño. Brian, thank you very much. A pleasure. Thank us very much for our heart to let us get in in your place, give us this time so we can share stuff with people, stuff that they want to know and they're always interesting. How are you doing? Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm really happy. Good. Um, just here ending our camp. There's only a few days left until the fight on February 13th. But yeah, just happy here on a Sunday with friends, Jesus, you, and the whole team. So yeah, just enjoying, enjoying the few days until I fight. Uh, tell me, tell the people a little bit your background, 154. Tell a little bit when you were a champion, how many times you defended the title. So they're going to know a little bit about you. Well, I became champion at the end of uh, 2016. Um, that was a great fight. It, it was at, in 32, a place where I fought. It was a uh, fight against the De, De, De Jesus. That guy never appeared again, huh? Uh, it, was a, it was a weird fight. After a great fight, you know, he go down, he take it down, then you KO. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more. It was really... A good rival and then I defended my title against Soro in France in Evian it was my first defense I get with my title it was a really hard fight it was one of the hardest fights I've ever had because of the of uh, getting to 12 rounds and just going at it when another it was non-stop it was a it was a hard fight it was a, it was a, a test of my strength. What was harder, the rebel or the cards? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk a little bit more. You know that everybody was super, every, It was a hard decision. But um, so that will be two. Yeah, France again. A great fight. It was a great fight. Um. I could show, actually demonstrate how, how how I was advancing in my in my boxing. What is you show what's Brian? No, I feel comfortable uh, working in different ways. Um, it was a great fight where I showed all my all my skills, and the last uh, round was when I just went all out. That was the best in the last round. And then after came the fight with uh, Lara. Yes, New York? Yes, in New York. Um, it, it was super cold. The stadium was just beautiful. It was a good experience. That was your first big fight, the big one. Yeah, yeah. It was your face, huh? It was my first uh, A-class fight uh, at a really, really high level. Um, really, it was a great fight. Uh, we we both uh, I myself my all my team we went all out. It was a complicated fight, but I really felt the winner. I believe I I was better, but not huge win. But I think it was a, a little better than him, and I think I I went forward the whole time. Uh, my jabs and everything was on point, and um, it, I really think that a tie was not a fair call. It was very unfair, but, you know, fights are fights, and uh, everything adds up as experience. <laughs> Complicated guy, no? He moved too fast. He's very aggressive. He has he has a lot of experience, and he has his little tricks, obviously, because of his experience. Um, you know, fighting with someone so complicated, um, and so complicated, it, it's really good for, for, for me as a learning experience. You need to tell me that one that you told me after, okay? The one. It's a. There's things that I can absorb from from this fight to better myself. For next fights, no? That sure. you're gonna learn from him with all the experience he got. He fight with Canelo, my water, if I don't forget. So many big guys, and he always don't let you be as good as you are because he's a guy that he moves so fast. You know, he runs so much. He's a difficult guy. To show yourself who you are, he's a difficult guy, no? Really, yeah, he was very complicated. And then after that, I had to fight against uh, with Sorrell. 
because he had become champion or silver or gold uh, from AMB, and apparently he was the one that was uh, up for classifying for the world title fight, and they had already asked for a permit to fight against Lara, but they I guess they, they gave him the, the shot at, at the title fight against me in France. But between one thing and another, after the fight with Lara, um, they started to pressure me for me to fight him in France, but I really didn't feel like I was going to get a, a fair chance because of the experience I had previously had. Uh, um, they didn't respect the, the contracts, the protocols, uh, even when it comes to the, the checking of the doping, it, it was very doping, shady. No. They didn't go through the original uh, company that does the doping. It was some local company who we didn't know who they were. Yeah, because you got so many problems along waiting. Like 15 minutes. Yeah, it was really a, it was a disaster for, for what it was. Being a, a title fight and everything. Uh, I mean, they even around the ring, they had like fireworks and all this stuff. Like, basically everything was prepared for for him to win. So yeah, they were the expected winners. They were in home with the people, with the fans, with the referee. They got everything. Yeah, imagine in the way and I was like 250 grams above when I weighed myself it was different to the scale that that we had in the hotel and I was like it can't be I, I was perfect yeah of course they were doing something weird no? yeah I don't know if it was on purpose but it was weird so I'm gonna let people know every boxer got a they own thing so they can win themselves no well, I mean, you already know how much if you're over and under, and I was on point at that when I weighed myself earlier. So it was obviously when I weighed myself, it was obviously it was off. And at that point, Soros like, ah, don't worry about it. That was a good one, at least, huh? For all the problems you got. I was like, yes, because 250 grams, I would have had to start running, you know. It's, it, like it's hard to get too much. I mean, at, at that point, I would have to walk, you know, to hit my stomach, something to pee or spit, and I can I could have lowered it, but but you at that point you end up very tired. Yeah, you and, just want to fight. You're tired. You want to go to the weight and fight, and that's it, no? Yeah, two hundred and fifty grams in a little while, it'll destroy you. On the same way, on the same day of the way in, I was like, it was too much. But those are things that happens. When they asked me to go to France, I said no. So they they stripped me of my belt because of that. But I think you did good because if you go to France, it was like giving away your title. No, yeah. you passed already that one, and then you you didn't want to do it because it was horrible the situation, the problems. And I think the manager, you know, sitting in front of the car oh, was yeah. brilliant, no? Because he was there Very watching true. all the time. And we're going to tell later, but uh, that was the thing, you know? That was, yeah, that was, uh, that was very important. When uh, Contursi got in between the, the ropes and started looking at their how they were scoring. Do you think it, that if he didn't sit there, it was a different story? Yeah, even the, the same judges were like, you could tell that they were uneasy of him watching there. They were counting with the hands, huh? Yeah, all, I mean, all you had to do is just add up and see the results. It, it, there's not a lot of science behind that. They were, you could tell they were uncomfortable because they were being watched. They were counting the points. That was crazy. 15, 20 minutes waiting. Yeah, I mean... Uh, you could tell that they were they was definitely uncomfortable. It was shady. Um, most of all, when the when the cameras were there, that very that helped a lot because they didn't give them possibility to actually do anything weird. And I think they felt more pressured. It's like they wanted, but they didn't want to change it because they were being watched. So, and I I think they were actually bought out as well. I think they were paid or something, but there was something fishy for sure. Uh, Aubrey Apache, like one of his managers, um, was also there watching, and he said, uh, "So and so sorrow, so so Castaño, so so sorrow." And I was like, "Oh, okay." Even the TV had had me as a winner, like the the France media had me as a winner. So the TV for France is like giving you the winner, you the guy from away. That was something weird, no? 
Yeah. yeah. It, 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 was a, it was a really hard fighting and a really hard rival, honestly. He's a, he's a high-level boxer, but, you know, fights are fights, and uh, it is what it is. But I didn't want to go and basically get stolen, and I would have had to knock him out, and that's not an easy guy to knock out. He could take some punches. You got him, but he can't remove, move, no? Yeah, at one point on the sixth round, I, I loosened him up a little bit, but he recovered really fast. I mean, he he trains up in he he trains in high altitudes. Yeah, but with Abel Sanchez over there, no? Yeah, uh, Colet, and then he moved to Oxford, no? Colet too. Yeah. Um. So here we are today. Uh, I did a fight against a Nigerian. Big guy. Almost also, yeah, he's a big guy. A uh, strong guy, but it, 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 it was a good fight, and thankfully, thank to God, we, we won. And uh, um, I, I, I didn't want him to quit the fight. The, the fight was was for a lot more, and uh, I reserved myself for the few rounds, and then I went off on the later rounds. Yeah, so you can show more yourself, no? He got injured his uh, arm, no? Yeah, I, I got hurt on the second round. Second round? In the second round, um, it, it was impressive because uh, people don't know that I was hurt. But they can appreciate. We need to show uh, some views. I finished the, when I finished the second round, like starting on the, on the beginning of the round, like 20 seconds into the round, I, I, I throw a right hand. And then a left hand, and we cross we cross arms, and his elbow uh, hit me like right under my my bicep. And so like, like here, no? Yeah, right, right there. You touch him. Yeah, like... he it hits me, and uh, I felt the hit. Boom, and I felt like a crack. Something like uh, yeah. something pulled off, no? Yeah, I, I hit him again, and. And when I hit him really hard, so and I felt I felt clearly a crack. So that was a cross, no? And then I, I I hit him again, and I felt my my arm kind of like loosen up, and I started to feel pain, and I got scared. And I said something happened to my tendon or something, or I, I had a, a muscle tear, because I, I held it for like 15 seconds, and unconsciously. I was like, I, I gotta keep hitting because I don't want my arm to get cold. It didn't get worse. And I kept throwing my hand like I could, like I had, and it just wouldn't work. So after the round, I went to the corner and I couldn't stretch my arm. And I saw like a ball on my, on my arm. I was like, damn, I broke my arm. I was like, yeah, I think it's a torn muscle. So they started massaging me and, and like trying to get the swelling down. And the Dr. Sanchez was there. Uh, he was very attentive, and he started getting my the swelling down. And he definitely got the swelling down. It hurt definitely. But after that, I didn't have that ball on my arm. So you didn't have that impression after now. It just it scared me in the moment. We all got scared. And then the doctor looked at it, and he he kind of got the swelling down and. It was, he was a really, really uh, a good professional. He put some cold on it, and on the third round, I came out and started working again. But I started throwing, using more, one arm more than the other. That was crazy, because uh, that I noticed that he was insured. You, you throw so many punches, it's like, when you get insured, you know, you try not to throw that arm, you know, the one that you're insured. So you start like looking the left on another one. So and the the opponent, the, you know, the other guy, he noticed all the yeah. But yours didn't notice on the cameras, you know, when when they were showing the fight. It looked like a, a guy who was, you know, in a good training. Uh, he never stopped throwing punches, and then the guy stopped the fight. But your your uh, yeah, I tried not to before. show that I was injured because uh, if you're hurt. Uh, you don't want to show that to your rival. Uh, you don't want to. You don't want to give him a, a, the upper hand 
They show it uh, that your weak, your your weakness. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yes, right. You always have to try not to show it. And that's what I try to, to do, even if it hurts. I try to pretend it doesn't hurt and act like nothing is happening. And in the moment, just uh, try to evade it until I recover. You know, so psych them out from one side to another, and just buy myself some time until I I can recover and keep fighting. But this is a all a learning experience day by day. Today, uh, we're in my case, I want to I want to be the world champion and uh, at a 154 weight class. So now you're going to you know, fight again. Now it's coming to Xerida, the next fighter, February 13, in May, uh, Bob Springs to be more, you know, excited. excited. Xerida, you know, it's a guy who moved fast, you know, a little taller than you. That's the one to be a champion again. Brian Castaño become champion again. Never domesticate, you know, the opponent. So never do less the guy. For sure. You need to go, but anyway, you need to go with a big, you know, heart when you fight. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tixera, I respect him as a fighter. And as a sportsmanship. He's a strong and he, he's a, he's a, he's a beast. He's dangerous. He hits really hard. I, I, I've done training with him in a, a camp in, in, in Vegas. And, uh, I met him there because of Matias. He was uh, his ex coach, um, and Matias was training, and I kind of got close to him in Vegas. And uh, and uh, yeah, we trained uh, together. We even sparred uh, a few times. Um, yeah, your brother Alan also did sparring. Yeah, with him, my right? brother also did sparring with him. I got the chance to interview him and I asked for the sparring of Alan with him. It was a mix of Portuguese yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I asked about your brother, and he said that he's a strong guy. He did hard punches. It was a good chatting, you know. That we did. He looked like a nice guy, you know. He he doesn't look like a. Yeah, yeah, he's a very low profile. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, quiet guy. I, I respect him, like a very good uh, athlete. Uh, on the top of the ring, I'm gonna do my my job, my work. He has his titles. And um, it's the title that I want today. You need to go back, you know? Yeah, it, it's going to come back to me. It's what I, it's, it's what I want. <laughs> I've earned it. So, yeah, we're working really hard to, to get that title back. It's a, it's a war that's coming close in the next, in the next few days. And that's where I'm going to take advantage and bring out the best of me. Yeah, of course, you always do. That's a little bit, you know, your background, this history of the last years. So now tell me, how is the day of Brian Castaño in LA, in Los Angeles? Um, well, Monday to Monday, except for Sunday, I, I do some, some nice uh, short rounds and a little bit of a, just throwing gloves a little bit. Every day is the same. It just very every day varies on sparrings. I wake up at eight eight through the morning and have breakfast. Not at four in the morning like some other players do. I don't have the need to do that. I try to get my my well needed rest. Yeah, it's important to be you know in a good uh, well like sleeping time because if you do three times working out you're like tired and you don't have the energy you know. And you don't yeah. got the same energy. Besides, I'm used to going to bed late, so I, I'm not. It's hard for me to wake up that early in the morning. So, it's I, I, I like to feel comfortable, and I feel comfortable when I rest well, because um, I'm a I'm a guy that likes to. Uh, I, I like to train hard, and I need to be well rested in order for me to train hard. Right here, knockout boxing, boxing in the South Gate. I come with my dad. And I train the knockout boxing in the South Gate with my dad. Uh, it's uh, Manny Robles and uh, Edgar that actually manage the place. I, I do the whole uh, technical part 
technical part in the morning, and the physical I do it in the afternoon with Matias, and we work really hard. So let's say I make it to the nine, 9 a.m. at the gym until like 1.30 I, I get home. And then like at 5, I get ready again, and then I start training the, more physically. Yeah. But yeah, I drink some mates and uh, and then I, I go back to the gym again. And uh, I I have my my food, my snacks that Matias makes for me to get me ready to train and get so my energy. So you get your food, so you get to go to the training, going slowly, slowly. You got the calories, no? So that way you you can do the exercise, no? Yeah, I I vary with the foods that I eat. If uh, depends if I'm sparring or not, I eat more calories or less calories. So yeah, I, I go at like nine or ten in the morning, and I don't spar maybe till like twelve because when I get there, they they start sparring from the lowest uh, weight until they get to my weight, so I kind of have to wait my turn. That's good that you're not heavyweight, otherwise you're gonna start doing the sparring at seven. <laughs> yeah, otherwise I would take forever to spar. And yeah, uh, uh, like. And from until like eight o'clock, we don't get home. Honestly, every day, except for Saturdays that we go to the mountains. That's uh, pretty hard too, you know, going up, down. Changing super hard. hard. Changing gear so you can go up. But truthfully, it's something that uh, I learned here, and uh, with Matias, um, he took us to the mountain, and he said, "We're going to start doing mountain because this is really good." So we started doing stairs also. Um, in Marina del Rey, yes. there's a big stairs that we used to do. Like 200 meters, super, super inclined. That destroyed me. Yeah, that's a typical training. The bleachers, you know, they go in the fans. So in a training of American football, you know, the players start going up and then, you yeah. know, going down. And many yes. times they work out the legs, they run fast. They, they start like changing you know the rhythm it's pretty crazy you need to warm up a lot otherwise you're gonna have an injury and then you're gonna fall down yeah and then you fell down over there you, you're gonna get killed better the mountain no yeah it, it's super nice and we also work in the sand yeah as many beaches around here now yeah we take advantage uh, of where we can where we can go we uh we do some work in the sand. If not, we, we go to the, the hills and we work out in the hills. We always try to start changing so we don't get bored. Yeah, mostly. otherwise you get bored, no? Yeah, well, the, our bodies, they tend to get used to it, so we try to do various things to... Yeah, because the body get used to it and then you need to do something, no? Yeah, well, I mean, if you don't do those changes, your body doesn't really get better. Yeah, you need to change the rhythm so the body, you know, start working out different now. Exactly. You have to do things, new things to shock your body. So uh, for, for us, it's a it's a daily routine, and it gets to a point where it saturates you. And also, just living with 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 uh, with a team and all that, it, it it gets very hard. So when you're getting down the the weight, uh, losing weight, your humor change. Uh, you get plastic tiredness. It, it's, I mean, it's, it's psychological. Everything adds up. But here, it's uh, we see the the fights and it's it's all nice, but they don't realize how hard the previous work is, and the the distance. Um, I've been here for like five months. And I really, um, it's hard because it, family know, is a family now. Yeah, even though I still have my people here, um, I have friends and, and, and another family that that are somewhere in Las Vegas, others in in, in other parts of Argentina. Um, it it's hard to to be away from everybody also. You know, like let's get together and have a barbecue, th things like that. So you, you go out of the routine, you know, getting together with the people, uh, the, your culture. The culture is like getting together always now. 
it's yeah it's yeah it's, it's how like we are always getting together like close no yeah our, our cultures we're very affectionate yeah we got our drinks here so we get separated because the people are gonna say well they're not responsible with what's going on right now no well we, we try to take care of each other i take care of yourself you take care of yourself yeah you're gonna let me know with better details uh was the training with the Kobe? How is the difference? Because the boxer near air, he cannot train with the mask, and you know, so many shims that are close to with this whole problem with the Kobe. It's so weird, no? Well, yeah, truthfully, yeah. It, it, it kind of uh, it brings you down a little bit because um, I get to the gym and uh, in the gym. It, the gym has everything. Yeah, I got everything. You got the pool, you got the weights. You got pool? There's a pool, gorgeous pool, sauna, jacuzzi. Yeah, you got all the facilities there, and you got everything. Even the for a massage. There's even a, a tanning bed. Oh, wow, you go with the fight with all the little columns, huh? Yeah, but, you know, all those things that you say, I don't have them now. And there's things that, 10 minutes in the sauna, I mean, yeah, 10 you minutes go, in the jacuzzi. You go relax, 10 minutes. You go more relaxed, you come here and you go to sleep, huh? Yeah, I, I, I come home just super relaxed and just relax and sleep. But so things that we have to get used to, that all of these things are closed. And coming, going to hours where people are not there, so you don't get in contact with people. Yeah, you don't get exposed, huh? Yeah. It's really hard to get used to uh, the situation, but we try to take things however we can and do whatever we can and be safe. But in the gym, they've been very great. They've been very good with us, and we're extremely grateful with all of them. Matias that helped us with all the hours also organize our hours we can't really complain about anything they've been really good we work really hard and we keep working really hard and we're taking care of the last details these last days we're we're more uh, just enclosed by, our, by ourselves and just taking care of the last details without that many people yeah, around yeah, so we know what you can see it huh Somebody who want to see, spy you, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, the, the spars I've had, they've been, uh, um, uh, from Las Vegas and there's other trainers that they start talking to each other and they know they, they, they know each other. So we're just trying to prevent people from knowing what our actual game plan is. I, I felt very observed the last few days from people that, that were coming from the outside. And we, we were looking at it with my dad, like, what are they doing here? And they were like, don't film because... Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're recording anyway, no? <laughs> yeah. So just to prevent that, we decided to uh, do things ourselves and keep away from people right now. There's another RG2 that's here and has a gym. Uh... Suga, he has a gym, and there's another gym also. So we have a few gyms that we go to, but they're more private, and it helps us work in a closer, more close environment, and to prepare ourselves better for the combat. Perfect. Now talking about routine, U.S. What's the food that you like the most from here? So many good things here, tasty. They're gonna make you fat, but yeah. What's the thing that you like it that I want this? Uh, here, I like Starbucks. Yeah, Starbucks is the the best, huh? Yeah, there's no. I think it's one of the best places in the world. We don't have it anywhere else. Yeah, the flavor change here, no? Yeah, in Argentina, the ones that we have are they have a completely different flavor to the ones we have here. You have a frappuccino Argentina, and uh, it's like water with with a little bit of ice cream on it. it yeah, it's like mixed. Huh? It's like different, no? Yeah, here it's just it's just crazy. It's a lot. It tastes a lot better here. Yeah, you got the lemon pie. The lemon pie is amazing, you know. Yeah, uh, over there's like a dry 
um, dry cake. It's it's uh, even lemon is different. Yeah, it's so different. You know, you touch it and it's got so many flavor now. But um, the the hamburgers here definitely. Jack Jack of the Box. The first one I tried was In and Out. That was a good one. That's a really good eat. Yeah. Jack was a. Uh, I, 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 like, I like Jack in the Box the most. And their fries. They were kind of weird. It's the curly fries. Yeah, with the curly fries, huh? <laughs> yeah. Planet Hollywood in Vegas, remember? That, that burger was really oh, good. It yeah. was so big with the fries. Uh, Randy Gordon, Rancy Gordon. Yeah, that's the guy. The fries came with the cone and the little flavor, remember? Yeah, I think they had parsley on it or yeah, something they got, like that. they got something like that, huh? I've, I've never had fries like that. They were garlic, parsley. Yeah, they got something. I think, they had a, no? I think it was Parmesan. Yeah. It was something weird. The flavor was different, huh? The hamburger, yeah. the hamburger was so big. In New York, um, there's a, uh, there was a place a, a friend from uh, New York recommended me the last time I bought over there. And he told me, you have to try Burger Joint. It's one of the best burgers that are there. I went and I tried it and I, can be I really... That, that one I needed. It, it's, a, it's a bomb place. I love you, it. You need to fight again in New York so we can go now and try it. I was inside a hotel. In a hotel that was like a random hotel right next to the check-in. There, Big sign? No, no. There was like a a, a red a, a red a curtain, and you went through the curtain and you went into like a little saloon. But right as soon as you got went through the red curtains, there was a little hallway. You could see like graffiti's on the walls. The place got it was amazing. It was cool. It was super cool. And then I looked to the side and I see the little lights. And then, like, three meters forward until the door. And then you can see the restaurant inside where they made burgers. And, and you look, it looked like a classroom with, like, liquid uh, liquid paper on the walls. It, it was crazy. I was like, wow. I was like, this is so weird. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is where we're going to try the burger. And when the burger came and I, and I bit it, it was like kind of red on the inside. It was a little rare. I don't like them like that. And I sent it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, they bring it back to you, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they brought it back well done. Yeah, you was scared because of a bacteria, no? Yeah, exactly. I had seen a video a week before about the bacteria on, on rare meat. <laughs> you didn't want to bite it and get sick, huh? Yeah, I was like, no, nah, I didn't want to risk it. And, uh, I went with my wife and we... Uh, we, we, we looked around on places and we had a good time. Yeah. You know, you got so many things to try. You got so many tasty. How you get the motivation to wake up, don't eat this, uh, train, get it, lose weight, all the sequence, you know, that every boxer do, but what give you the motivation to do it? For example, my case, I sleep bad and, you know, I want to work out. I'm so tired. I go like, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to throw the towel. I'm just going to relax. So you don't have the time to do it. So you cannot do it. I didn't sleep well. I don't want to train today. You, you, how you do that? The motivation to do it and, and say to my, yourself, I need to do it. How you do it? Uh, I, I grab myself from my hair and I take my <laughs> drag myself there. Uh, you got like, my come ears. on. <laughs> <laughs> but no, really, uh, I, I do that almost every day. So every day is, is pain. Sometimes not rested. You you sometimes want to rest more because your body feels tired. Um, it's really it's. I, I've already rested in Argentina a lot. I I rested what I needed to rest, and I know if I come here, it's to work twenty four seven. Yeah, you give everything, everything. Yeah, even if my body's tired or hurt because of sparring and training. Um, I, I come here to work. This is my work, and I live off of this. You cannot say, no, I'm not going to do anything today, no? Yeah, no. I'm here 
to, I should, I'm here to like force myself three to four months and, and that way I make a difference in the future. I know I have to take advantage of the moment right now and it's my future. I know the rival is training, so I, and I think if the rival is training and he's destroying himself and getting better, I need to do the same thing and it makes me motivate myself more. It's like a, it's like a, a woodpecker pecking on my head. Yeah, that's but, good because if you don't have the force, your dad is there, you know, and it's like, come on, come on, let's, let's work out. So sometimes you need that you know, to you know. Yeah, for sure. But obviously there's days where I say, I can't, I'm so exhausted, I'm tired, and I want to rest. And uh, if, if, when I have those days, there's no problem. I rest those days, no problem. Yeah, because you need sometimes that relax so the next day you can come back with all your force, no? Exactly. I, I, I give it 100% effort. My dad uh, knows this. But when I'm really, really tired and my body needs to rest, that's it. No problem. I, I take the day and I rest. And then the next day we'll work hard and we'll make up for it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, don't eat bad. Eat healthy and rest, but don't mess up. And Brian, tell me, you did sparring with so many big fighters, famous guys, you know, Porter, Sugar Mosley, uh, I don't know, so many big guys that probably forget. Yeah, Robert Dowie. <laughs> yeah, and PlayStation with you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, night. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, what was the experience you know you got in sparring with these big names, big guys, so famous? That's pretty cool, no? Well, for me, it was a beautiful experience because um, my first sparring was uh, with with uh, Sugar Shane Mosley in the GMC Pro Boxing for yeah, Marcelo Yeah. Uh, big, I, big hug for him too. Yeah. The father and the mom are so cool. They're like super family, you know. They, they, they yeah, they're, they're they're one of the families here that I that I yeah, you're right. That we've actually like spent time together. Birthdays. We went to see the fight with Lara with uh, was it yeah with Hart yeah yeah. You know, getting some boxing time. So it's pretty cool, now. We, we shared a lot of uh, things, a lot of years. Jim, living together, and he's opened the gym for us every time. And thanks to him, too, uh, I was able to spar with uh, Sugar Shane Mosley, which was a great opportunity, and with his son as well. And that was a, an incredible sparring. We did a lot of sparring with them. Um, he likes to spar with us because we would pressure him and he would hit us and his son also and uh, we would help each other mutually they were super active yeah he got 44 years if I don't forget you see the body he got for 44 he did guy do the sparring every day it's super crazy I don't yeah, know yeah, how yeah. he do it you see him is in the wild card Santa Monica he's in an regime uh, he's like in so many shims and he's with Freddie Roach sometimes once in a while he used to go with Freddie and he's doing sparring how he do it he's crazy 44 years old yeah he's always uh, uh, he's always been super humble and, and he's a great boxer yeah I see many times that he show you how to do a movement how to do something no yeah he would always show me little tricks and yeah, yeah, and little little things, movements I could do, and he showed us how to get balance and how to rotate and how to hit. He he would show us yeah, the, like the to movements. Get with power, no? Yes, how to get more 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 power in the punches, and he helped us adopt those uh, those techniques. And he he would show us he, to to see if, if the, those techniques would, would work with us. So I I saw most of his fights, and then uh, in the same gym, uh, uh, Porter also showed up, and I had been sparring with the, uh, someone else before. I don't I don't remember what happened, and he he got out. He didn't want to fight anymore, and um, we were like really going at it. That was pretty cool because it was something going on there. Like they didn't. 
Thrasy, you know, he was such a good fighter, huh? I, I, I think it was like four rounds. And then uh, the guy got, got out and uh, he said, uh, can I do two two rounds? And um, Porto, no? that's, Porter's dad was like, uh, no, no, no. And I said what he said to Cordell. And he said, only two rounds. He looks at us. And I don't know what he told him, but he didn't want he, he didn't want his son sparring with us. He was like, he said, no, he said he can't. And he said only two rounds. And he's like, okay, fine. So, so he calls Porter. And the guy put his gloves on and uh, got into the ring. And we did two rounds, uh, and we went at it. It was, it was like hand on hand. His yeah. hand is super strong and hard. Yeah, Porter is super, super cool guy. He's so nice. His dad's a little. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was a little uneasy about the situation, but it, but we we went at it for two rounds. I don't think he expected for me to put that much pressure, and I hit a, a good a good shot. And then he hit me, and that, that one that hurt that crossed my eyes, but it, it was fun. So the people don't know, but, uh, you know, uh, like a punch like that, you wake up, and then you go like, I want to kill this guy now. Yeah, we started, like, it was a speed thing right there, because we were both going faster, and then he went faster, and then I went faster. And it, it was good. And it was the last two rounds. And... uh I, I took advantage of the opportunity to fight with him. And it was a great experience to spar. It was only two rounds, but uh, it was great. And then after, uh, after we after we ended the sparring, I, I, I thanked him and shook his hand. And then never again, but it was a good uh, experience. Then we did sparring with some other people, but... Yeah, so many people, so many names. Yeah, but since they were the first ones, they were the ones that marked me more. Yeah, so you start with two big names, such a big names, so important, and they were the fi the first, and it's like, wow, you start with that? And yeah, for sure. Stay in your memory. Yeah, I've been sparring everywhere. And uh, like, that's, like that, we, we would spar with almost every, every, anybody that would come. Yeah, because that, it's that so, were well trained. So many Olympics here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we look for people, but there's a very good level of boxing here. But then we went. Yeah, the first team that you went there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we went there and uh, looked for some sparks there. Uh, we we met with uh, Mostro, which is Marcelo Crudele. He, oh yeah, quickly. Yeah, 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 we, yeah quickly. We did gonna a fight fight with quickly also. Yeah, and he's gonna fight with mostly the day that you fight, same day. Both guys that you know, no? Yes. Yeah, they're fighting the same day. It's gonna be a great fight. Yeah, it's gonna be a great fight because mostly Junior is pretty good. Yeah, mostly Junior is really good. Quickly is fast. Quickly is fast also. Good guy from England. I met him too. Strong guy. Uh, he also, also fights in Fantasy Prince one time. I don't remember the guy who he fought, but he fight with a famous guy too, you know? Yeah, he, he's pretty he's pretty strong. Yeah. The, the sparrings I did with him were very hard. And physically, he's super hard. He's super strong. And uh, that's where sparrings were really hard. Yeah, you fight sparring with so many guys you got so many people you know ukrainians guys from asia you know armenian so many guys he was an armenian also oh armenian he, well. he was he was really tough yeah you got turkish armenia you got so many people to decide yeah super strong oh this army i was like who is this guy he hit really hard and he was super fast he moved fast I was like, this guy's like 80 kilos. <laughs> I was like, he weighs more so than you, me. You think he was heavier than you? Yeah. 
but um, we we were like, this guy's eighty kilos, and no, he wasn't. <laughs> and um, those those are things that that's how you start getting experience. And, you know, everything adds up. Yeah, everything for the experience, for your future things that happen. Everything you need to put together, the positive, negative. So for the for the fights, you need to put it together now. Yeah, everything adds up. Everything adds up. From the good and the bad, everything is is experience. And um, you need to know where to locate your punches and all that. I'm gonna ask you about three anecdotes, so people can know. Uh, they can learn. And probably don't know it. I don't know. The first one, New York fight with Lara. I don't remember what wrong was that you told me that the guy asked you, hey, your shoe, your shoe. Please tell me that one. How was it? It's amazing. I think it was a fourth or fifth round. Um, I was fighting, like, pressuring him. I was taking it, walking forward. We we started, and then he stops, and he looks at me and says, the shoe. And... and I never looked down, but I look at him and I laugh. And uh, you, you got I'm it. Like, no, you really got it. I, was like, what is, like, I, I don't want to swear, but yeah, yeah. It's like what the heck? I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not gonna look down. Yeah, he wanna got you when if you look down, huh? Yeah. I mean, we do that in the gym, but 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 it's like what's going on? Like, yeah, I was like, what the hell? We say hi, he stops and he says the shoes. And it was like, what are two seconds were I was like, stunned. I was like, what? I was like, I was like, damn. And I was like, and I started hitting, I started hitting him again. <laughs> But he said it's so serious and natural. You can see that the guy, he knows what he's doing. That was so weird that he said English. He's speaking Spanish. He couldn't say in Spanish, no? It's like, probably it was shorter to say in English than in Spanish. It's like, uh, hey, yeah. true. I think, I don't know. It was very weird. Or maybe I understood that. Yeah, because... Uh, he stopped and he said the shoes. With with his lips, he... <laughs> he was like mugging, you know? <laughs> he couldn't do like that. With the, with the lips. <laughs> Yeah, that was very funny. But, you know, those are things that, uh, things that happen that you're like, you're in disbelief. Uh, 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 but he couldn't say it in the title, you know, he couldn't throw that one, no? Yeah. Then when we saw each other at the hotel, um, we said good fight, it was a good fight. Everything was very, very relaxed, no? very relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> Everything was too, too recent, no? The fight? Yeah, we we got there. We were at the hotel. They were eating pizza, and they asked if we wanted to eat, and we we're all thank you. So, <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember. We ate a lot. I can remember a lot of the night of pizza, and then yeah, the ending, the closing. It's a classic. Your dad yeah. singing with that one. He always end the night. He sing good. Your dad. Yeah. Um, about singing, we're gonna throw the the singing of, of your song, and another make that probably people know it. It's about the shim of my weather. No, that one is really good because the shim of my weather. He's the king there. No, yeah, really. It, it was nice as an experience. Um, nice as a to live that moment with Floyd. Dervonta, no, yeah, no, yeah. Too. The security, a lot of people that were there, the sparrings. Uh, there was, there was a, a, a coach that they they beat up because uh, one of Mayweather's boxers and the securities went in and they just beat the hell out of him. The the security are so huge. Yes. They they pulled they stood they shook up every all over the place. No way. And the guy got down and just took <laughs> off. 
and uh, that was, was our experience there. That was like the welcome, no? Like, it's your turn now. <laughs> The, the the there's a lot of people. There's like 35 people from the outside just looking there. We were just like my dad, Matias, uh, Pileta, uh, another another friend from Argentina, Diego, uh, from Las Vegas, and we were there just uh, just sharing the moment. Then it was my turn to spar. Right before uh, I went up, I was putting on my head protection. First, it was my gloves. I was putting on my gloves. I had 14 and 16. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I went to box with John Lobo, and uh, he's a big dude, so I was like, I'm going to wear the 14. And I looked, and he was kind of heavy. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, he was like, God, already, no? Yeah, and um, he looks at me, I look at him, and uh, this guy is kind of heavy. I was like, give me the 14-ounce gloves. <laughs> so I'm putting on the 14 one, and then when he's tying the other one, Javonta stands next to me, and he starts literally calling no, Floyd are you kidding and me? telling on me. They're 14, Floyd, they're 14. So I pulled my hand away. <laughs> yeah, because he was telling him everything, no? Yeah, he, he just kept on saying, Floyd, 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 and they're 14. And Floyd's like, no problem, no problem. And he calls <laughs> the other one, and he says, 14 for John Lobo. I was like, oh, damn. So I was like, I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, you're thinking about the fight, like nothing happened to you. Yeah, but with the closed protection. He's like, come on, come on, look at this. And they were laughing. I was like, he's laughing? And I kept looking at, <laughs> at his face. And the girl that was with him, because he had one that was massaging his, his head and one was massaging his back. So yeah, so the guy needed. And he was picking his gloves. And he says, talk to him. He says that those gloves here, we don't use them because those use the chickens. <laughs> he said that, no, I'm going to believe it. <laughs> I was like, I have to fight. I have to be, be careful. He like, no, no, no. He said, you can't use those because of the metal they have. They can hurt the hand. Yeah, you can do what saying, like whatever. Uh, oh, they don't get it. I was like, no worries. Floyd gives me some golden gloves that he had. I grabbed them. I was like, all right, whatever. I, I, I put on the protections and the gloves. And uh, I sparred. I did like, I did like, I did four rounds. We were going to do like eight or six. And uh, we went at it first round, second round also. And, in the second round, I hit him with the liver, and he goes down a little bit. And on the third, I learned he hits me, and and my even my mouthpiece flows flies out. And I hit him a few times, and then I was like, "What do I do?" I I put my mouthpiece on again. <laughs> Just grab it and put it. <laughs> yeah, and then third and fourth round, we started going at it again. But on the fourth. Before I, I went out again, I look at, I look at, <laughs> yeah, he kept hitting me on the fourth. And so that's like a street, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, what, I have a lot of cardio. Yeah, you got a lot so, of cardio. So you get, you make tired there again, no? So I tired him out a little bit, but he was big. And we just started going at it. And boom, boom, boom. I got him in a corner. There was, there were, he was eating on the on the ropes. It's like you're in the street, no? Because everybody's on the, on the field. And the ropes were like bent over. Oh, bent over like a bed? Yeah. So, yeah, you <laughs> no pull like the, the ropes and then bounce back up. It's like you, you go near and the people throw you back, no? 
Yeah. It was like Rocky against. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, the movie that was yeah. Rocky. Sincerely, it was a. Uh, it was a general in the moment. Plus, my brother was oh, yeah, there. Forgetting about him. And all my friends. And they were all yelling and cheering. <laughs> yeah. Because you were like only three and there were like so many people outside. Yeah, they were all yelling. Yeah, they, they were all cheering for John Lomo. Wow, that was crazy. And Pinet, they were like, Yelling also. Uh, they're going <laughs> to kill us all. <laughs> uh, it was definitely a crazy situation. But super fun. And uh, yeah, we thought that things were going to get out of hand. But was, we were like very anxious. Yeah, you got the city going on to you. So it's crazy, no? Yeah, definitely. And at the end, he said, he's tired, he's tired, keep going. And uh, he was, you could tell he was tired. And then Floyd says, that's enough, no more. And then they're all, hey, no, no. And then they started cheering for me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's how you do it. That's where my, that's where my side was cheering and saying, that's how you do it. And then he kept calling him out and saying, let's go. Let's go again. So he was saying that? I was like, no, no. And, he, and then he left. I, I was exhausted already. I, was, I had already been hitting the... Yeah, it was so bag. hot. Vegas is so hot, like 50-something, you know? And and probably you know the ship doesn't have uh, any, they're closed. They don't have air condition. They're small. Yeah, it has two rings very close by, like three three seats, three files, three lines of seats. The the space is very small. And that's it. Super small. It's it, but it was it's crazy how hot it was inside. I, I, I was hitting the bag and a big guy came and wanted to spar with me. And my dad looked at him. He's like, he's like, no. <laughs> my dad's like, no way. You're big. You're huge. <laughs> but yeah, he, he looks scary. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. He's like the guy, he's big, big guy. Dude. He's like, Yeah, it was a big dude. I was like, no, I wasn't going to. It, it looked a little bit MMA style fighter. I wanted to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to top the, you know, probably got injured if you fight with him. Yeah. I, I, I did a little bit of bag and some other stuff, and then I sat down. And I saw how they were filming Floyd doing his own stuff in training. And he kept saying, uh, translate, translate. He says, uh, congratulations for a good job. You did a good job. He, he, he never quit. He would knock all of them out. But congratulations. You did a good, you did a good, uh, good job. It was a lot of joking, but he looked at me when we got there. He saw the Chino Maidana shirt. He said, Maidana, not good here. <laughs> and I was like, hey. There was a, it was a little bit of tension. Yeah, so it was weird in the first, no? Yeah. But I guess I know the world champion is here. And he looked at me, he's like, you were champion this? I was like, yeah. And he just said, nice to be like that? Yeah. And he, and he left. And, and they were putting in a sofa, new sofas in there. And they would sit there. It was uh, something, something nice to experience. 
school for experience. It was something like they did the show. As yeah, they they knew that you was good, so that's why he came and say like you did a good job. No, it was good. It was pretty good at what he did. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the guy's a showman. Yeah, it's my weather. He's like the showman. Yeah, but um, my my respect for 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 him as a boxer. We keep going with uh, the stories. Uh, probably we can say this or no. Something amazing with the uh, with the bell. I think nobody knows this one, uh, so I will throw this one so that people can know. Of course, if you can say it. Well, yeah. Everything was uh. Everything was weird in France. I mean, how it started and everything, no? Because Cantucci uh, wasn't there. There was there was a, lot, a few people that weren't there. And the 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 fact that the doping and the the contracts that weren't weren't done correctly or it was my first defense of a title and I I understood a lot of things but I didn't understand a lot of them also I didn't understand why they weren't respecting the contract when we got there they were sending me to a, a like a horrible hotel so the hotel wasn't good it was kind of shitty a super small room it had air and the TV but a tiny, tiny kitchen, but it wasn't what we had asked for in the contract. So, Contusi had, had had an agreement, and they definitely didn't ex respect their agreement. Uh, a little works you did, no? Yeah. And um, we, 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 I mean, we did the best of the situation. Yeah, so you, you can... Uh, have you know everything that you needed now so um, yeah, from the beginning they didn't respect anything and besides that they sent us to a place to eat that uh that the hotel had it was all food that i couldn't eat <laughs> crazy it's like they did it on purpose huh it was all like really really heavy uh not good quality food that i that i couldn't eat and that i wasn't used to eating also and between one thing and another, and the next day, I was like, everything is good, but this yeah, is... Like, come on, respect the, what we sign. Uh, I'm not comfortable here. It's just, well, let me see tomorrow, we'll, we'll fix it. Yeah. The, we complained about it, so uh, they, they, we called Conto and then called to, called to call them back. And they they fixed it for us to go to the Hilton that was two blocks away, you know. But they 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 try to save money and put us in a cheap place and keep us uncomfortable. So it was weird. It was super weird. No, it was weird. Yes. And then they sent me to the Hilton with a better food and a little bit more comfortable. I, I had a menu. I could pick what I wanted. It was something different. It was different. And then from from there. The, the fact that they didn't respect that, then the doping that was all shady. They they did respect a lot of the, the agreements that we had. Uh, the 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 payment also they timed they, they they took a year or a year the and a half to pay the money that they always give you after the fight. They literally took like a year a year and a no half. No way. They supposed to give you it right away. Yes. Supposedly they made the deposit, but it was fake. They gave me uh, some effect, some cash, and a check. That was almost nothing. It was just to move during the moment and to eat it while I was there. So basically, only for eating, no? Yeah, and that was obviously a discount from the no from way. all the they money. Took it away? Oh, yeah. And yeah, and then also when I went to get the doping, they didn't want to. They didn't want to do it. I was like, I'll do it anyways, but, and, and they said that you didn't want to. I said, no, I didn't. I didn't say I didn't want to do it. I said, you didn't respect the contract that the doping had to be with a specific company and they wanted to do it with a, a shady company that I had no idea where it was from. I was there, sitting there for two hours until they gave me the, they, they checked my doping. 
and uh, we made some noise, but yeah, yeah, you got the cell phones to do it, so you do like recording something. This is what's going on, no? Yeah, just to show that what was going on. It, it was a it was an experience that I do not want to ever have to go through again. And then when the when the, when the scorecards we thought they were cheating, uh, we had to pressure the, the judges, and also through. It would, have, it would have been different. But it, what happened, happened. It happened for a reason. Uh, we're working hard for that yeah. not to happen again. And, uh, of course. Yeah, so. Well, but tell me the what happened with the title. You know, they were forgetting all the title. You remember that? You remember that one, no? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not even going to bring that up. Yeah, of course. That was good. But I didn't know if you want to, you know, say it. The, can you tell me about it? Yeah. Nobody knows this, but only a few people know this. Well, can we? Can you tell me about yeah, that Yeah, 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 of course. But listen. So, we leave the hotel. We'll take everything. I don't even have a bag. We were walking from the hotel. It was like a block or two blocks where we were we were going to fight. It was close to uh, the Evian River. And um, uh, taking a little suitcase, so we're tired. <laughs> and then uh, we were walking. And the, the guy that we had stops and he says, oh, wait here. And it was a uh, a small street behind where we were going to fight there's some hotels but it was like a a rock a rocky road we were chilling for like two minutes waiting for the authorization we were seven so we get authorized now you need to put everybody together huh yes correct so it, it was uh, uh Kike's wife and the family so we had to organize and sit correct. We waited like five minutes there. I left my suitcase with the belt there on top of a like a little like rock that was there. Like it was like a like a pot. And I sat on top of it and waited and waited five minutes. And like, ready, okay, come on in, come on in. Through here, through here. We get in. And I forgot the, the suitcase there. So I walked back. So something was missing. Yeah. Well, all right, let's go. So Katoshi says, who's taking the belt? And <laughs> I, I don't know. I think Penelo said, I'll, I'll take it. I think it was Penelo that said that. I think. And, and I'll take it. Okay, yeah, sure. I'll take it now. Yeah, sure. Where is it? What? The belt. And we all look at each other. And I look up and I was like, oh no. I was like, I left it. He was like, where? <laughs> I left it on the street outside. Uh, uh, so they, they all start, we all start running outside oh, to grab the belt. <laughs> and it was no, still there. No way. It was there. Imagine it wasn't there. Yeah. It, it was all. It was the time when there was a lot of uh, like uh, uh, dangerous in France. It was dangerous in that time in France. Yeah, like there was a lot of bombings or something like that yeah, yeah, at that yeah, time. Yeah. And it was like, uh, yeah, it's like they see that and they got scared, you know? Yeah, nobody touched anything. It was like, wow, we're not gonna touch this. I, I think right it now. was because of that. I think they thought it was a suspicious, a suspicious package. <laughs> how long did it take? How many How many minutes? Like 20 to 25 minutes. Wow. Yeah, because yeah. you're like with your mind in the fight. You want to be in the yeah. fight. I, I, I looked in there to take all the stuff to see if my people were there. And then... Yeah, to the stadium. Yeah. yeah. I was just relaxed and I fought early. And I was like, no, it can't be. I, was like, I couldn't believe it. But I was, yeah, the feeling was it. like the, the feeling of desperation. Yeah. 
uh, it was like, in that moment, it was something that I couldn't believe. I'm never going to forget it. Like, really, uh, what a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you you come on, you're hitting in the fight. But so you you want to fight, you know, you got you don't have something else and you got the title and everything, but just want to go to the fight. And there are things that, you know, that can happen, but because your head is in another place. You're, you're like a, about to fight. So take the title to school and everything, but you're like about to get in the fight. You're done taking something else. You know, I think because I, I, I wanted to take it. <laughs> I, I wanted to like, you know, show that I had it. <laughs> But yeah, I completely forgot. So those things that you think will never happen, and they'll happen. Everything can happen in the life. That's why they happen. But the they happen that, for a reason. Yeah, but the things stay, you know, and they're like, and you can tell them after that this happened. It's like a good uh, memory to to remember, no? Yeah. It was a. Uh... Yeah, I think a few people knew this, no? Yeah, not a lot of people know. Uh, I think it's cool to say it after everything that happened in the fight, you know, was so crazy, the waiting, uh, bef but when you get in the hotel, the waiting, the doping, the fight how was it with the cards, you know, uh, everything. It was so crazy, it was everything so weird that anything can happen, no? For sure, for sure. There was a lot of factors there that uh, I, I try not to pay attention to them, but it helped me to get, get strength. And the adrenaline from my first the uh, belt defense. Yeah, was, you like so much power, you know, your kid. <laughs> but yeah. Experience, experience. Experience, definitely. That's cool. Um, tell me, you fight with Spencer in Amateur, no? That one is something that a lot of people don't know it, no? Yeah, yeah. that was a, a fight that was a... In Venezuela, no? Yeah. It was in the second phase. Uh, with with Carvalho. Mark Carvalho was yeah. a figure. Uh, 69 kilos. He was a medalist. He was like the scary guy from the category. And then the second round was with Spencer. It was a hard fight. I won. <laughs> it was a nice fight. At, at the beginning... Like, we were measuring each other. Yeah, yeah, you like, checking each other now? The, the first minute 30, we were there, like, measuring each other. And then, uh... It's uh, only three rounds. You yeah, need to, to uh, fight. Exactly. And then the second round, I, I started swinging. Second and third. Uh, on the second, I hit him on the side. Or on the third. Um, uh, yeah, there, as soon as it started, I, I hit him up with a big blow. And, yeah. Wow. So they go slow. And then we started going slower, and then we started going faster again, and then I hit him again. And like 30 seconds later, I hit him again. And they started counting him. Like, I, he wow. was he was broken at that point. And then I started pushing and pushing, and he, he started pressuring me a few times. <laughs> Besides that, um, fighting with the North American, it was like, wow, it's, yeah, because it's like fighting with somebody from here is like going up for you, you know? Yeah. So I was like, come on, let's, let's, let's get this going. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the, the big guys, is that, that's for you, you know? Definitely. And at the end, uh, I fought, fought got my my yeah. also. I lost 17 to 15. A lot of points that they didn't add for me. But I, I, I went forward the whole time. Um, I, I, they, they showed that I lost, but someday I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with him again. Yeah, something yeah. that like you want to do, like we do rematch. You want to do it again, no? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you win that one, so no? Yeah. I believe I did. Um, but I think uh, that's something that uh, I, I have pending. The, the, the decision was theirs. So you asked Vertigo the tape, no? Yeah. 
but they haven't uploaded the, those fights anywhere. And the Spencer, will, no, that you was, get the Spencer one? No, the Spencer wasn't uploaded either. There, there was a lot of fights, but my mine were never uh, uploaded. They showed a, a like a, a a short version of it, but but never again. I've never heard about those fights again. If they ever uploaded them, but I've never seen them. Would would must have you never see it? No. I've asked, I've asked for them, and I've tried to look for them, and they can't find them. To see if there was at least like, if there if they were like anywhere to try to find them, but no, we well, never had any luck finding them. It couldn't be cool if you can get the tapes for you, you know, to keep it, to show it to your family, like a memory, no? Yeah, at the moment, I didn't even think about buying a camera to record it myself, and uh, that way I would have kept records of it beautiful fights that I would have had some nice uh, memories from. So Melian was recording? Yeah. And uh, he would record some stuff like that, but but there wasn't that much that was recorded. Well, but, uh, you know, there wasn't so many cell phones, so many technology right, like right now, no? Yeah, the cell phones in that time weren't yeah, that yeah, great for recording. Yeah, the old the snake, no? Yeah. Yeah, the snake one. Remember that I used to play? Yeah, some of them didn't even have cameras, and so the ones that did weren't that great quality either. But it would have been nice to have recorded that fight because they, they stay in our, in our memories. Yeah, of course. And it's nice to have it as a memory for... Wow, well, yeah, like a for, good memory. For, for the future. So, yeah, that's cool. And now that, luckily, every cell phone got a camera, so it's not going to happen again. No, well, uh, I mean, uh, all the time somebody's going there and they're recording, so you get the chance to, you know, ask for it and access to the fight, and so that's pretty cool. Yeah. And now tell me, uh, amazing fights, hard fights that you got, that punch that, you know, throw you out of the fight, how you do to recover, to wake up and get back to the fight? Well, the, the physical health that you have, that you have and the preparation that you have before the fight was what actually helped me recover. If you're dehydrated and you get hit like that, it's a lot harder to to, to recover than if you're so very well hydrated. Now. Yes, like and very well trained. So thankfully, my the hits that I get, I recover really fast because of my training and my health. From uh. Like or a, or a hit from when I was fought in thirty two and I got and I fell down. Yeah, because when you was fighting for the title, that was like super weird, you know, the way that you fell down. No. Yeah, the, the, that that punch got me like it came in really well. He he got you like shot some time, no? He, yeah, he just, it was a perfect shot. It was a straight shot. That one. It was a straight shot, and it hit me, like, right in the middle. Wow, he touched you there, and he got you, know? Right on the chin, and, it, yeah, it, it, I felt the snap, and my my legs weakened. And I didn't realize it. My, my, I didn't feel my, I couldn't feel my body. Wow, on second round, no? So, yeah, everything was prepared for you to win, because it was in Argentina. Like, what happened with Soro, but to you, it, it was so weird. Yeah, you, you just knock out him in the first round and you go like, no, it doesn't get up. And then after that, you know, second round, he, he got you and you fell down so slow, so weird. It was weird. Yeah. On one side, uh, more even though he, he hit me and it, cut, it took me time to recover that whole second round, in the third round, I was already recovered, but my body, it was like loose. Yeah, because it's like yeah, I was still body, like you know? I was still a little shaken up. Yeah, it's like it was strong. And yeah, I felt I felt strong physically, but that that hit and that 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 punch it can take you down. No, the, the the truth is, it left me it it left me like a little wobbly for the whole fight until I hit him and I knocked him down. He he, he if he knows he whoever knows. Whenever you fall, your body doesn't react the same way. 
it was the first time that I actually take a hit and I get knocked experience, down. The same experience now. Yes. And like I couldn't react well in the moment, and uh, it, it, after that I I hit, I knock him down with the straight to the liver and the, and the the stomach, and he goes down. That's the typical. You know, you punch him, he fell yeah. down. But he he went back, and I and I got him perfect right there. And I saw him bend over. I could tell it really hurt him. And then he got up at the end, but he didn't want it anymore. It was that. Yeah. yeah, I I think uh, that was it. Fights were fights, and. Uh, that was one of the fights that I will never forget. Yeah, it was like like Rocky. We can say that that fight now. Everything how it go out. Yeah, the adrenaline. After the fight, I looked like a zombie. I didn't. I, had, I wasn't strong, but I, I wasn't even hungry. I was like, my stomach was feeling weird. All the emotions that you got from the fight now. Yeah. Yeah, the adrenaline. Everything that you got, no, the, the anxiety, yeah. no? Mm -hmm. You don't realize it, but everything adds up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the emotions affect a lot, no? You relax, and then uh, you start feeling the tiredness, the blows, you start feeling everything after everything is over. <laughs> but yeah, there are experiences that, that you get from That's the That's the good sport. thing about boxing. Um, which one was the hardest punch that he felt like? You go like, wow, this guy, he got a strong hand. Uh, you know, like every hit you go like, wow. You know, probably he can throw a good one and he got you. Like this guy, the last five hit the Jesus, but this guy that throws so bad. Wow, the Ravanchenko. Ravanchenko and Soro. Wow. This is it, it was crazy, you know. They, they got like heavy hands now. Yeah, both of them were. Uh, they you definitely feel when they hit me. They're they're strong. The Ravchenko, more of like a, a like a rock. Yes, but Soro was more like a. It, it was they like were like faster. yeah they were like just they hurt. And, the, the gloves were like hard like the cell phone and small <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm never using those gloves to pick those gloves again yeah but I want to wear those knockout gloves but 10 ounce the 8 ounce are a lot smaller and more to, to, to hear more about but but yeah, yeah. The, uh, because the, the Mexican gloves are better. They, 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 they just fit differently. The Ravens are actually really good. There's, there's quite a few gloves that I like. Yeah, so it's, it's you know how which one to to choose already now, no? Because there's so many. Yeah. You have some gloves that are better than others, but. It's, it depends on the boxer. So which one was your hardest fight? Like saying like, wow, what a fight. Like this hard, we, we got a fight so so bad. Which one was? For me, the hardest fight was uh, was with Soro. Soro? Yeah, because uh, the Ranchego was really hard. But... I mean, it was, it was, Tereko was... It was a show, huh? It was, it was a show, so but, but with Soro, it was different. Because, um, when we started fighting, I, I felt the hands, and I, yeah. I, I, I can, they definitely hurt. Um, but, the, yeah, those two fights were definitely, they were... Soro was hard because it was a 12 round fight also but those both fights were definitely the two hardest fights I've had but I would say if it would have gone 12 rounds with Tevichico I probably would say the same thing would you like to fight him again? oh yes I would love to fight him again 
I mean, both of you grow up, so will you do it again? I mean, they're good experiences. They're, they're professional boxers that are really good. So, yeah, because the fight that you did before, it was so good that uh, you will do it again. I think next time he's going to come stronger and so am I. So, all that you learn, the experience that you got, yeah, and will help prove you to now. him that I'm going to beat him again. Yeah, you're faster, you're better now. You got both of you like uh, did an amazing, you know, uh, future in the next fights. So basically, the fight against is gonna be really good. I'm talking about next fights: uh, 13 of February, Fantasy Springs, Ball Springs with Texera. Uh, it's gonna be with no people, if I'm mistaken. Yes. How's it gonna be that? It's gonna be weird, no? Yeah, it's gonna be a little weird, but it doesn't change anything for me. So it's gonna be only you and him. With with public or without public. Uh, actually, yesterday I was talking to uh, my friend Alberto Palmeta through Instagram, and uh, he said we we're talking about through Instagram and sending about the messages, and we were commenting about the fact that it was there was no public, and he's like we always fight with with stadiums empty in Argentina, so it, it doesn't really make a difference for me. So it's a little of the same that you used to do, no? Yeah, we've, we've fought a bunch of times in stadiums. Uh, we say, wow, this is a beautiful, beautiful stadium, but you couldn't hear anything because there, there was nobody <laughs> there. Was silence. Yeah. So we're, we, we grew up like that. We're used to that. Yeah. So it's like that, basically. Only some competitions that have some, uh, some a little bit more people, but normally we're used to not having that much public in our fights in Argentina. Yeah, then you you don't have like the so the, only the, the, the teams from our boxing. So you only got the people, like the, the people from the boxing, no? Yes, correct. I just got to do my job, which is go up. Beat up, beat up my opponent and get my belt. That's it. So yeah, go up and leave everything in the ring like I always do. Yeah, I'm talking about Texera. Let's see if you think about this. Texera lost with curtains for KO. No, you saw it. Probably you saw it, of course. Yeah, I saw it. I hope he, he does the same move. Uh, so you can get it. <laughs> so after Curtis lost with Lomatoso by KO, you. Beat Lomatoso. Can you? Did you think about the sequence? Yeah, yeah, it's a little weird. Yeah, it's like different fights. I know all the time, but it's like a sequence that if you think about it, Texera lost with Curtis, Curtis lost with Omatoso, but you beat Omatoso. So it's like if you put it on a side, uh, it's like you you can beat them because one beat their one, and it's kind of weird, huh? Yeah, yeah, but Texera ate a a big hand that that knocked him out of, of the fight. But yeah, yeah. Fights are fights and rivals are rivals and you have to respect every rival. And respect him in the yeah, way that... Don't think he's less than you, know. Yes, exactly. But, um... Yeah, if you get too much uh, thinking that you're the best, probably it's going to be different, no? Yeah. But... Texeda is a guy that he has a lot of cardio. He goes forward. He he hits hard. He he's definitely he's not an easy opponent. He's a complete fighter. Just, yeah, because he's only Brazilian. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. There's like 300 million people, and you can get some good fighters now. Yeah, even Argentina say ah. Oh, He's from Brazil, he's got nothing, but no, Brazil has a lot of good fighters as well. And they're all in the UFC, and they're they're badasses in the UFC. Yeah, you're right about that. They got all the champions from the UFC, like different weights, heavyweight, you know, small weight, medium. But they're 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 good in, in combat sports. Even in the amateur leagues, they're good. They're uh, there's a Delta Lopez. There's a few a few to yeah. name, but. There's a few good Brazilian fighters that are that are out there right now. Yeah, Consensao, for example. Yeah. 
We went to Pan Americans, World uh, Boxing Matches. Yeah, they've always been there. So you see them. You used to go to matches together. So, so it's like they got good fighters, no? Yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of good fighters. Yeah, and some just uh, they prefer to fight amateur and just live off of some small money. But I think this guy is going to come at me 100%. We know each other. We've sparred before. And he knows that my physical... Matias Sabrina. Yeah. Yes. He, he knows him as well. And he knows that he's very... Uh, he pushes so, us to the limit. So uh, that can help you, but also can help him because they, like, both of you know how they train, no? So it's going to be a little hope, no? Yeah, but I have more advantage because Matias, yeah. I have him. Yeah. He's like, he knows where, where to hit him, no? Yeah, he knows where the, he knows where the, where the cool. kill his tendon is. That's cool. Whatever they say is, uh, once we start... Yeah, yeah, whatever they tell you, in the fight, it's going to be different, no? For sure. You improvise as the fight goes on. And then, uh, depending on what they tell you, you need to figure out what to do with what they tell you yeah, as well. whatever you can hit it. You need to hit it now. You, you got to be in the fight. It's not It's not easy for any boxer or for any team. Yeah, because probably you plan to fight a, one kind of fight, and then, you know, it's a different fight, so you need to change the plan. And the, the guy you think he's going to come to you, but the guy starts running, uh, so you need to change the fight, do something different, no? Yeah, for sure. You definitely got to be listening to everything and be ready. But that's boxing. Tell me your fight, the fight, your dream fight, the, the fighter that you want to fight uh, next day in the future because I would love to fight with him because I don't know how he fights because I want a revenge, uh, how you told me before with the Venetian, the guy from Venezuela or because he's the, the main guy that, you know, the, the, the boxer that everyone want to see. Uh, so which one is the fighter? Uh, besides the uh, the Abuelo Charlos, Canelo, Golovkin, um, then any, anybody, but those are the, the main names that I would love to fight. Uh, yeah. After this fight, obviously. Yeah. But that, that are the guys. Who you say now? Yeah, to test myself. But yeah, there's there's a good level of boxers. In the Super Walter division. Uh, there's in the medium category, there's also good names, huh? Yeah, for sure. There's uh, 54 pounds today. There's a lot of good boxers in that weight range. But hopefully, to some someday I'll be able to fight those people so close we were like talking for five hours it's crazy it's like 12 a.m in the morning we need to go to sleep well it was amazing not the chatting was so cool like they're gonna people gonna love what we took but people ask me a lot they want to see how you throw a knockout to the liver how you throw that punch can you show me i'm gonna be the big time yeah for sure for sure i'll show you <laughs> so now uh, Mr. Brian Castaño is going to show us a little class of boxing so he, he can show you how to throw the, the liver punch. There's a lot of variants, but the most common one is the hit to the liver, the uppercut to the liver, during sparring or whenever. So, two gloves. Right on the liver. So you... You dodge and you swing. So the guy's gonna attack you. Step to the side and boom. In the side, huh? Boom, right there. Central. Side and bam. Oh, and that's it. The guy's down, huh? Those are the ones that hurt. One of the, the mostly hurt. That's the one that really hurts, huh? <laughs> yeah, you get hit, hit down. You're 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 done. One more, so people can see it again. To the side and bam. 
Entonces, Game over. over. <laughs> yes, if you don't bend over, you'll you'll fall on the floor, but you'll definitely go down. <laughs> Ryan, thank you very much for everything. Thank you for your time. We talked about everything, basically. The interview was amazing. It's always good to talk with you. Uh, you know, uh, a few people are like you that, you know, give us the time to talk about everything. That's why so many people follow you. And like you, you know, you and your family, I was tell you are the great people. Thank you very much. Say to everybody hi. Thank you. Thank, thank you to everybody. Thank you for you for this for this video also. To, to all my family, my the, my team, uh, to all the Argentinians, to everybody that's, to all my fans. And hopefully we'll uh, become can, world champions again. And... Thank you for the unconditional support to all the people that love the sport and support the sport. Uh, whoever sends me messages, all the support that I receive, I'm very thankful to everybody. My dad, my trainers, Contursi, who's my manager, and, uh, and all that, the Argentinians that are here in the U.S. that are always uh, welcoming and giving us a hand for all of us and we're always there for them and uh, thank you for you for this space and for this video February 13th uh, let's see him and hopefully the title is going to go to Argentina thank you thank you Brian